Hello everyone, I'm Taylor Bambico. For today's video, we're going to be looking at the Walther PPKS. Now before I go any further, I'll ensure this firearm is clear. We're good. Let's continue, shall we? Of course, being a fan of the James Bond movies, it was only a matter of time before one of these ended up in my collection. Sure, while this is not the exact same firearm used by James Bond, it's close enough. It's actually a bit more powerful than his as well. While 007's Walther was in 7.65mm or 32 auto, this particular inner arm PPKS is in 380 auto. The store I purchased this from actually had a Walther PP, which is the full size variant of this pistol, in 32 auto, but I was thinking, nah, let's just stick with the 380. And of course, another difference between 007's PPK and the PPKS is the size of the frame. While still using the PPK slide, it is using the frame of the Walther PP, thus making it the PPKS. And the reason for the existence of the PPKS is due to the Gun Control Act of 1968. Of course, this particular firearm being made by Inner Arms over in Alexandria, Virginia, importation really wasn't an issue. Now, if I told you the reason I purchased this was for some other reason other than 007, I'd be lying. The first 007 movie I ever saw was GoldenEye back in 1995. Wow, that's 27 years ago. Where'd the time go? Then of course not long after that the GoldenEye 007 video game came out and you're pretty much always using this firearm. Well, it's the PP7, but you get the idea. Now, when I first took this to the range, I was pretty excited, but that didn't last too long. Let's take a look, shall we? Now, if any of those particular malfunctions had occurred to 007, I do wonder if he would have survived as long as he did. Of course, he's Bond. He would have improvised. Initially, I thought it was my thumb hitting the magazine release, so I went to shooting one-handed, ensuring my thumb was away from that. That didn't solve the problem either. So what did I do? I went online, ordered some new magazine catch springs, figured maybe it's just worn out. Considering this firearm didn't have a box when I purchased it, I have no way to determine how old this particular firearm is, and researching online didn't help too much. Turns out in arms didn't keep the best of records, at least from what I'm finding anyway, on the forums and all that. So I put the new magazine catch spring in, went to the range, see if it solved it. Nope. So at this point I'm considering just getting rid of this firearm, trading off to something else. I figured, okay, let's try one more thing and give this firearm one last chance. I ordered a new magazine catch for it, put that in, went back, still had some hiccups, but after a few rounds, the gun began to work flawlessly. And it turns out it's not too difficult to change the magazine catch out. I really thought it was going to be, but thank you YouTube. There's plenty of videos on how to work on firearms now. Saved me a lot of time and frustration. 
So after giving this firearm a couple chances, I will probably be holding on to this for some time. I doubt I'll ever get rid of it. And as I said, the underlying reason to owning this firearm is because of the 007 franchise. I still wish I had the Browning BDM I had. There's a lot of firearms I wish I still had, but I purchased that firearm because that was used by Sean Bean, or also known as the Walking Spoiler, as Alec Trevelyan in GoldenEye. For some reason, I don't know what came over me, I traded that firearm and a six inch blued Colt Python for a Tavor SAR-21. This is the SAR-21, right? Yeah, yes, the TAR-21 is the machine gun. The SAR-21 is just the semi-automatic rifle. To this day, I regret getting rid of those two firearms. I don't even have the Tavor anymore. I first considered buying one of these several years ago. They were everywhere. Well, not the blued ones. It's mostly just the stainless ones. I did see one years ago with the, it was the blued frame and stainless slide. They were doing combinations. Is either that or it was a blued slide stainless frame. I don't remember now. This was several years ago. And I was like, ah, eh, I don't know if I really want one. Then eventually I found this one. I'm like, okay, I want to get that one. The stainless ones are nice. A lot of people like them, at least from what I'm seeing online and watching videos. But I like the blued one better. And of course, after finding this one, now I've seen about four in the past couple weeks. Saw three stainless ones and I saw a blued one. That blued one and the other stainless ones all came with their original boxes. Of course, one of them was brand new by, I think it's Smith & Wesson doing them now. I don't know if I'd get one of the newer ones by Smith & Wesson. From what I'm reading online, of course, I should take that with a grain of salt. Those aren't as good as the Inner Arms ones. Then, of course, I've read that the Inner Arms ones are junk compared to the original ones made in Germany, which might be true to that. I don't know. I've never handled any of the original Walthers. It might be superior. I just don't know. Of course, when I first had the malfunctions with this firearm, I was convinced that it was just a lemon. Turns out it was just a bad part. As with anything man-made, eventually it will fail. Turns out I was just replacing the magazine catch and now the gun, so far anyway, works flawlessly. I do wish it had the blued magazine instead of the stainless one. This one is made by Walther, but one of these days I'm gonna get an actual blued one for it. That way at least it all matches. I wouldn't necessarily recommend this as a concealed carry piece, at least today anyway. As far as I'm concerned, there are better options for small concealed firearms. Glock 42 or 43 or even the Ruger LCP for that matter. For me, this is just another fun gun to have in 380 in addition to the Beretta 84FS. In all honesty, I would choose the Beretta over this firearm any day, but that's just me. One thing I can laugh at now is while I was filming range time with this firearm, I was doing some first person shooting and this was when all the malfunctions kept occurring. As I said, I can laugh at now. At the time, I'm just shaking my head. As I said earlier, I wouldn't necessarily recommend this as a concealed carry piece. Sure, it can be used, but there are better alternatives to it. But if you're a fan of the 007 series as I am, I would recommend picking one up. They are out there. They're decently priced depending on the condition and what it all comes with. Sure, while this firearm is different than what 007 used, the ammunition is a little bit easier to find, 380 auto versus 32 auto. I have seen it out there, it's a bit more expensive. Now if I ever did find a Walther PPK in decent condition and not for a ridiculous price in 32 auto, yeah sure I'd get that. However, I would only get one because of 007. Well, that was my video on the Inner Arms Walther PPKS in 380 auto. If you enjoyed it, remember to subscribe if you haven't already. Click that bell icon so you know if I upload new content. Leave any comments you have in the section below and have a good day. See ya!